Hi, and welcome to this new video about Semantic Kernel. In this video, I'll show you how you can create a prompt template in an external file to interact with your large language model. As you can see, I'm always using a polyglot notebook, and I want to highlight this row where I'm using the Microsoft Semantic Kernel YAML packages. So I'm going to press play and to import all the packages from my um, Nugget um, repository. Then I can create a kernel instance thanks to my get kernel um, helper. It is going to simply create a kernel um, object as you should, as, as you see in the first video. And then I want to show you this code because it's really interesting. So in this situation, what I'm going to do is using a pack combine to create a, a link a reference to a file called chat YAML that is inside the prompt subdirect. Let's see what's inside that file. The file contains a particular syntax um, from handlebar templates. And it's important to notice that we have a way to create complex prompts. So we have each message, message role, content. So we are actually using a complex input object that will be used to compose the prompt at runtime. As you can see, we have a previous message with a role system, and then I have a sequence of message where I specify role and content. And I have a description from this prompt and an input variable. So I'm telling the system that I have an input variable named messages, and this is the history of the chat. So the real advantage of this approach is I can avoid to hard coding um, the way I'm creating the prompt inside my code so as you can see, I can give the your program the task to pass the messages object, some object, and then the exit prompt will be created based on this object. But you can change the prompt even without recompiling the whole software because you are reading the prompt from a file. The code is super simple because you are using a special method from kernel object called create function from prompt YAML, where you specify your prompt in YAML format. So as you can see, I've stored the prompt inside the file, but you can store it inside the database, wherever you want. It's a string. It's a simple YAML definition of a prompt. And then you need to specify which is the prompt uh, template factory. And this is needed by semantic kernel to understand which kind of syntax the prompt is written. Um, to, with, okay? And in this situation, the prompt is written with handlebars. So you will pass an instance of the handlebars prompt template factory. Then the uh, example is the same as the previous one. I'm creating a chat history, a chat message, and then I can simply invoke a sync. And this time is completely different interaction with semantic kernel because I'm calling the invoke sync string, telling the semantic kernel that I want to have a string and result, and I get a prompt, and the prompt is the very prompt created with the create function from prompt YAML. So the idea is semantic kernel is going to work with kernel function. You can create function with various ways. And this is the first function we are looking at, the way that the function created by uh, from a YAML prompt template. And then I simply need to specify kernel arguments where I need to specify at minimum the chat messages, the input parameter. So as you can see, we have the message parameter in the prompt, and we have the message parameter, the messages parameter inside the kernel arguments. And finally, I'm simply printing the result. So if I'm gonna press play and I'm waiting a little bit, yeah, you see, this is working. As usual, please support me liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And these are the takeaway of this example. Thanks to the concept of kernel function, you can create a kernel function from the kernel object of semantic kernel. And this kernel function, it's a way to interact with a large language model in a little more uh, complex way. A kernel function can be created by a simple YAML template and then it accepts parameters to bind a model of template with runtime parameter and create a final prompt. Template of the prompt in this way are not hard-coded inside your code, so you can always 
keeping your prompt template outside your software so you can turn up and change uh, if you need, or you can add even more prompt at runtime to better suit your needs. And also you can have powerful template engine like Handlebars that allows you in the template to create four loops, each loop, and so you can really create complex prompt from parameter. And this is um, the, we start to see the real power of um, semantic kernel because with this way you can decouple the prompt structure from the data. So you can keep the prompt structure outside your software and so you can change around time, you can evolve in the future without recompiling the code. And this is very, very powerful. And I'm waiting you for the next video.